we're focusing on animal assisted activities being offered on college campuses. So typically colleges will bring in um, registered therapy animals or even shelter animals to interact with students, typically during the finals week where there's a lot of stress going on, um, to really just help the students cope with the stress. And about a thousand universities at this point have been offering these types of programs on their campuses. And there's still limited information about the causal you know, evidence of whether these programs are safe and effective for not only the students, but also for the animals that are involved. Um, so our study of Pets for Promotion of Academic Life Skills, or Pet Pals, is looking to examine really mainly two goals. The first being whether, under which conditions, and for whom these programs are an effective approach to alleviating the student stress, um, as well as to increase academic success. So we're looking at you know, your attitudes towards learning, your motivation, and your executive functioning. Um, and then our second goal is really looking at whether under which conditions and how we can best impl implement these programs for the animals that are involved to really make sure that we're safeguarding their well-being. Um, so the way that we're doing this is randomly assigning students uh, to three different groups. So we have our first group, these students don't receive any interaction with students. They're in a stress prevention program that's evidence-based, offered through um, Washington State University's Health and Wellness Services. We have a second group that has about 50% of this stress prevention program, 50% of these um, interactions with animals. And then our third group just has interaction with the animals. They don't have any um, of this other program. So we're really trying to see how these varied levels of human-animal interaction are um, impacting treatment effects on outcomes. So looking at these um, student stress and academic success. Um, and then another point that we're looking at is coding the interaction between the students and the dogs. So that's really the piece where I come in as a graduate student of coding this behavior so that we can have um, a good idea of the quality of this interaction and really what themes and dimensions are really indicative of that quality. And then we have the goal of then using this coding and uh, coding of the behaviors to then develop this standardized quantitative tool to really measure the quality of interaction. It's a three-year ongoing study. Um, so about halfway through, we already have 100 videos, and we're focusing on this initial 10-minute period where the dogs are initially alone in the room with their handlers, and then the students enter the room. And so we have this 10-minute transitionary period where you know, the students enter the room and there's this big change in the environment and really seeing how our dogs react to this and then when the students approach the dogs and interact, what kind of behaviors we're seeing. Um, so initially our dogs do experience heightened arousal with this entrance of the students, but we're really seeing socially appropriate behaviors being exhibited by our dogs, um, things that we would expect to see in dog social interactions and they're maintaining social approach behaviors. So they're not disengaging from students, they're physically approaching them, interacting with them. Um, so we don't really see that our dogs are distressed. We do see this heightened arousal, surely, but not to the point where we're concerned about their well-being. At this point, you know, as far as we've gotten with our initial findings and kind of these themes that we're seeing arise. Um, and then, of course, we're also looking at the student behavior and coding for that and really seeing this synchronicity between the dogs and the students. Um, so, you know, like I said, this is just the very beginning, the tip of the iceberg, if you will. Um, but it's really important to be doing this work because, like I said, there's a thousand universities offering these programs, and we really don't have a lot of information or causal evidence that these programs are safe and effective for our students and our dogs. Um, so that's where we come in, and, and hopefully with our work, we can then inform, you know, universities of how to best implement these programs so that they are safe and effective for both our students and our dogs.